ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Quake World Championship presented by AMD. We are getting to the very sharp end of our final day here at QuakeCon 2017. Next up on the main stage, we have our third, fourth playoff place, a match which will cost one of these two players $10,000. We've got Kula and Dehang playing off a third place. Kula, I know it's difficult um, with these matches to come out and play third, fourth matches, and you've played them before, and you've won, and you've finished third. So. How is it to play for you? How, how do you become motivated for it? Um, well, actually, like the match for the third place, it's a kind of not that important, but uh, on the same time, it's pretty important. Like for, for prize, for like getting like bronze medal, because it's still a medal and uh, like getting a chance to be on the stage uh, when a tournament is done and just staying like those three guys. I think uh, it would be enough for me to try myself to get it. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. Good luck. Uh, Tim, yep. commiserations on the previous uh, match. Obviously tough coming out of that match. It's a very, very close match as well. How do you mentally prepare for this game now coming off that? I mean, just go right in and play. There's not much prep, just focus moment to moment in the game. A tough opponent, obviously, playing cooler, but it's also must be quite fun to be able to play a guy like this as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I can assure everyone, no one plays like him in North America. So <laughs> it'll be interesting. All right, good luck, both of you, gents. Best of luck. Dahang versus Cooler is your third place playoff game. Let's find out from DJ Wheat and the boys what they make of this one. I really love the answers from both of those players. I mean, obviously, Cooler saying, hey, yeah, I wanted the championship, but this is just as important being up there on that stage to get that trophy is, uh, you know, something that, that's worth fighting for. And uh, I'm going to give it my all. On the same token, like, it re is really interesting to hear coming off of a loss and sacrifice, real close game, um, knowing that you're done there. But... Now you've got to move on and try to take that third place. I don't know, Stuart, uh, two totally different motivations for moving forward in this tournament. Um, what do you think? It's got to be like two trains of thought for today. Super warmed up, been on the stage already sure. this morning, ready to play, uh, but also demoralized and also like not in the right frame of mind for this game. This is not like, what's my ideal preparation for a match? Losing the one before. Right. Right, right. Said no one ever. Well, Vic, while we get your thoughts, let's also take a look at just these two players head to head. And, you know, Victor, you've watched all of their matches leading up to this point. We saw some great games out of both of them. We saw to hang 2 0 his teammate Rafa, the, you know, the match prior to this. Um, what do you think? I think Tehang's playing really strong right now, although Team Liquid did lose that uh, close match. Uh, you know, he played really strong in the teams, and he took out Rafa earlier, as you said. Uh, cooler, looking really good, looking sharp. This is this really is a, a matchup of two veterans. Uh, it's contrasting places, because, you know, Tehang plays in North America. He's not really familiar with Cooler that much. And Can we talk about whoever wrote that graphic? Really wanted to point out both of them have finished second twice. But on the cooler side, it's cooler has never won a QuakeCon. was just written in big, yeah. bold letters. Someone, yeah. was, someone wanted to point that out. It's uh, uh, never I'm, happened. I'm curious about the champion selections. You know, as we've gone yeah. through the tournament, it seems to make a big, somewhat of a major impact, depending on, you know, do you pick a light character and some Sorlag or, or vice versa? Or do you go all light? We've actually seen some, some players decide to go all light. So I'm, I'm really cur curious to see what champion uh, Mick picks they do. Yeah, and I mean, there's no uh, discussion about, well, is one of these more experienced up on stage than the other? Because they've <laughs> both been on stage so many times. They've been in these pressured situations where maybe it is for third or maybe it's for second or even first. Uh, so I, I don't really think that's on the table. I think, Vic, character selection, like you said, is going to be really important. Historically, from what we've seen, we know pretty much what Cooler is going to be bringing to the table. But what Dehang has brought to the table has not necessarily matched this meta that seems to be kind of dominating. And, uh, you know, will that have an effect? I don't know. But let's also introduce the casters who are going to be taking us on this journey. Gentlemen, what do you think as we gear up for this third, fourth place matchup? Well, it should be an interesting one, to be completely honest. Here, Jahar, I know looking at this one, the biggest thing that the hang is going to have to look to do is try and get as much control over the map as possible. That was definitely one of the big strengths of Core that we were seeing in a lot of his earlier matchups. And if he's allowed to get that, it's kind of a snowball factor for him. If he's going to be able to get that control early on and Dehang's not going to be able to deny it, then I feel like Core is going to control way too much of the map, way too quickly, and Dehang's really not going to be able to get a lot going because of that. 
Yeah, I definitely agree that the difference in play styles is definitely the thing to talk about most here. Uh, yesterday we saw Cooler have to, you know, shift gears very dramatically from the very slow Sorlag play against one opponent to the very, very fast Anarchy play against another. And uh, I think that Sorlag is still going to be like the keystone for Cooler. The Hang, though, we saw some amazing clutch moments come out of him yesterday, though. And uh, these are both guys who have come very, very close to a QuakeCon title before. They've had other titles in Quake Live, Quake 3, uh, outside of QuakeCon, but this is definitely the event that gets you the most prestige. You know, it's the one that you definitely want on your wall the most. Yeah, absolutely, and Dehang has already pulled off one feet being able to upset against his teammates, and now I have to see if he can do it again, taking on what prior to this was one of the favorites to actually take this tournament, and now he's to find him for third place. That's gonna be it for us for now, though, guys, as we are getting ready for the match, so let's send it back over to the analysts. Much and keep in mind this is a matchup basically for ten thousand dollars as well. Fourth place will receive twenty thousand dollars. Uh, excuse me, third place will receive thirty. Um, so the ten thousand dollars makes a big difference. They all got ten thousand dollars basically for just advancing out of their groups. And uh, you know, it, not only that third place and sitting up on stage as Cooler said, but that extra money in the pocket can't be too bad. Absolutely, that's a lot to play for, especially just for one match. Um, you know, and speaking to what Cooler said. As somebody who has come up short before in, in the major events, yeah, second, third, uh, those matches are still important. You still want to prove that you're in that top group of players. And, you know, maybe I came a little short this time, but, you know, next time, you know I'm right there. So right. I expect these guys to give it their all and, and really go for that third place. Yeah, I mean, you make it that far. Yeah. You're, you're stopping at that point. Like, yeah. what's, the, what's the purpose? And Cooler, either, like, is someone who shows up to a tournament, either has a terrible tournament or has a great tournament. Like, if he loses a game in Sam, he's like, that seal, it still means he's, like, in form and he's going to play to win. Like, I would not want to face Cooler if he's gotten this far in a tournament. Yeah, I, uh, I, I agree. And, you know, the, the contrasting play styles, I think, would be really fun to watch actually play out here. This is still a best of three, and uh, it does look like DM6 is going to be the first place that we have these two meet up, but we are going to say good luck, have fun to both these players. This is the third and fourth place matchup for the Quake World Championships dual competition. It is Dehang versus Cooler, and now I'll throw it over to Blue and Jahar. Time for this bronze match here now between these two legendary players to see who is going to take home the lion's share of the prize pool. The difference between $30,000 in third place and $20,000 in fourth place. We are live with the first round in our very first map of this best of three series. Let's jump into it. Jahar, take us away. Could not be more excited to see these guys get into it. And they're getting into the fight right away. It's going to be that Sorlag from Cooler taken down right away. And I got to come back to what I said earlier. That Sorlag is such an important champion for Cooler. Losing it in the first, what, 30 seconds shows a a lot of aggression out of Dehang, a lot of confidence. Let's see if this can turn into a grab for the Mega. Cooler is uh, gonna be holding onto that Ghost Walk just in case things get a little bit hairy here on the Mega, but a very nice rocket coming out of Cooler there. Dehang's gonna have to pop his own Ghost Walk and get out of there. Here comes the chase from Cooler back onto Rail Notes, actually dropping down towards the armor, and there's a nice rocket. Actually, Dehang pushing forward a little bit. Cooler having to respect that movement just a tad and get out of the fight, get back over to Heavy Armor. Still 15 seconds before Mega comes back up. Cooler can use that time to get some more rockets and possibly even LG. It was a good bounce that came out there from Cooler, but the follow-up was a little bit poor. He wasn't able to lock down that trade kill just yet, but Dehang's aggression that we saw a few moments ago was really great. It was a big change up in pace for him, and it did allow him to take out that sword like right from the beginning. As you mentioned, that's been his, his prime champion so far in this tournament, knocking it out right within the first, what, 20 seconds of the round. Has beautifully played for him in order to get an early advantage going here. An explosive start, but as, of course, as we come into Nyx v Nyx, things are going to get much more tactical, a little bit quieter, as Cooler is actually going to be scouting back on this side of the map, getting the grab for the heavy armor. Dehang's definitely going to know he's going to be back there. He should still have timing on this, but he's really kind of taking his time back here on the stairs. He's not really moving all that much. Maybe looking for a trap on Cooler. Moving over to Mega. So this is giving items over to Cooler. However, when you're Nyx, both that armor and that health will be ticking down at a rate that pretty much matches the spawn of the items. They're, they're mostly going to be gone by the time uh, they come back up. So it's not really about holding the stack. It's about making the trap. Yeah, absolutely. And it's obviously, as you can see, we can already see most of that health for Cooler going away. As we have the respawns coming back up in a few moments here. He's able to get the armor again to hang. Was not able to forge an opportunity to move in and steal that away just as of yet. All right. Not sure if Cooler's heard the jump over from Dehang. In fact, Cooler's still, still looking for Dehang down at the lower tier and has 
at this point has completely lost track of him. Not something that happens very often when you're playing against somebody like Cooler, but there's the initial damage taken out by Cooler. Very nice LG play. Dehang had a lot of movement, but it did not result in a grab of the Mega Form. So he's going to be popping out, running away, and Cooler's on the chase here. Both of them have used their Ghost Walk. It's going to be a little bit of a face-to-face -face fight here. Well, Cooler's going to have the height advantage, but dropping down on the LG is not a good way to start things off. He's done a little bit of damage with the Rocket, but now he's got to go into hardcore recovery mode. He's going to be falling back here now. Cooler is, as he knew that armor was up a couple of seconds ago. He's only got about five seconds until the health comes back up as well. And he just saw the Hang pushing into the hallway. Hang, thankfully, had just gotten his stealth back up in the meantime, so he was able to escape. And almost a good rail shot going off against Cooler. A little bit short of the shot, though, so it doesn't connect. But now Cooler, he's on the chase. He's going to be trying to move back in and see if he can hunt down his opponent. You can see the Hang trying to move over here to the bridge. I think he was looking for the timer pick up on that armor there. But uh, because of the last fight that had happened, Cooler was delayed in picking that back up. So he's a little bit mistimed it now finds himself out in the open in a bit of a rough spot. He's only got about 50 HP left, but falling away. He's going to try to continue this fight with the Rockets, and it's not going to work. Cooler popping out of the stealth, gets that trade kill, brings us down to a 2v2. Cooler was totally railable though there, but he definitely knew that he had to hang. A little bit confused, a little bit perplexed, and using that positioning well to his advantage, able to get that frag on the board and tie things back up. But again, that sword lag is gone. We now have Slash coming out from Dehang, and this could heat things up a little bit here as the pace should increase, as well as the shots coming out of Dehang. Cooler will definitely need to be very careful and watch his health. Dehang is continuing to want to play this very straightforward and very aggressively, but the problem is leaping up this jump pad. His opponent has an LG train directly on him, tries to turn it back around with a rail shot, but that'll miss, and that's going to cause him to pop the trail to get the heck out of that room. He'll fall away inside of the pillow room, and Cooler, for the time being, at least, is not going to choose to chase him. He'd fall back to go for that armor pickup again. Megalith oh. is in the back of the room, but I'm not sure if Dehang knows this. He's going to be put into a rough patch now. LG bring him down to just one HP, trying to survive, trying to skirt out of the way. Cooler is taking his time to get over there to pick up that Mega Health. Dehang will respond with getting a little bit of his HP back, but it's not really enough to survive, considering. And Cooler just got that mega health pickup. Cooler just needs a little bit more damage to get the kill, but for whatever reason, he can't find it. Watching these important rails from both of these guys miss is so infuriating for them both, I'm sure. But to hang barely can him coming out of that near right, coming back from one HP down at the pillars, even revealing his position with the rail. Not something you want to be doing, but here we go. We've got the ghost walk back up for Cooler to hang. Putting on a little bit of a chase. You're putting some pressure on the teleporter at the very least with Mega coming back up. There's another rail whiff. He needs to start making some of these hits connect in order to put the pressure on Cooler. And there's finally the one, but it is now traded off as the Hang himself has to go back and get a bit of a of recovery. Armor's gonna be coming up in about five seconds, but this could be dangerous for De Hang if Cooler decides to show up. But as we go into overtime now, we have sudden death Nyx versus Slash. Next kill will win here, and both these guys have brought each other very, very close to the brink of death in many different fights, but neither one has been able to complete the kill just yet. This fight's been going on for a good three, four minutes now without a frag happening. So, and we're sitting back and run into a bit of a stalemate here. Dang, though, still really struggling to try and get any semblance of power-up control. Keeps trying to sneak in and get little bits of damage against Kohler, but he's been relatively unsuccessful for most of the round. He has so many opportunities to do damage there on Mega, but yeah, you're right. He just has not been connecting with those rails. Nice little bit of rock damage there. Doesn't quite force Kohler over to the Ghost Walk just yet. He's going to toss down a couple rockets on Heavy Armor and then get out of there. Dehang is going to need to use that slash speed in order to cross the map and put some pressure. This time coming from jump pad side, taking a rocket jump and putting himself on the Mega this time around. This is going to open himself up to rails potentially from Cooler. But so far, again, the whiffs are coming from both of these guys. Not a lot of rail damage uh, trading hands here. No, and now hang on the upswing over here as he goes over into the small armor room. He's going to be able to find his opponent the quick pop, the stealth, but a rocket did hit onto Dehang. Pretty much wrecks his armor count and some LG damage is going to be hitting him too. So Dehang forced to fall back to recover a little bit more of that. And Cooler in the meantime once again, not really too keen on chasing his opponent down. He's been having a lot of trouble trying to trap the hang into a corner here and just complete the kill. Even when he does, he often takes a little bit of damage himself that kind of forces him out of the fight. Yeah, it's been a little while since we've seen Cooler find the hang someplace where he has to be, but really nice opening rail. One more, well, actually not quite one more would do it, but Cooler's taking a little bit of rocket damage. But yeah, Cooler was able to get a nice trap on the hang as the hang ran out of rail ammo and was actually going to the rail gun in order to restock. But here comes an aggressive push with the Ghost Walk catching the hang down by the armor. He should be able to get out of here cleanly. And once again, the rails are going just a little bit wide. Seven seconds to Mega. Cooler's going to be having to choose between the jump pad or just getting out of the hell half room. And it looks like the hang's actually going to be taking it here. Actually, taking the fight straight up to Cooler. I really like this. The push is going to be forcing Cooler back out of here and giving up to hang a little bit more time to control the timing on the Mega itself. Well, leaving around that, they are going to be able to spot the situation as Cooler sees the hang trying to move over to get the armor control now that he's managed to flip the narrative a little bit here. 
Get both these pops from himself, but Cooler is going to sleuth right in, see if he can grab it. He does get the pickup, but he's taking a little bit of damage in the process coming out from Rockets Rails. It's been a little bit rough here in this round for the most part, really from both players here. They've been struggling to hit any connections. Granted, again, they're going up against two very, uh, very small hitboxes, so those yeah. shots are going to be a little bit harder to hit, but I would have expected at least a few of them to connect by now. But the important thing is that they're setting up all these opportunities, and they're still able to get out of the fight when things don't don't go their way, and it hasn't been. So we've actually seen relatively little damage uh, trade, but there's the trap on the bridge. Really nice initial pop rocket there from Cooler. Here comes the LG. Dehane could be caught, but he's looking for that last little bit of cell damage, and he makes it, getting the first round against Cooler. Finally, after a good, what was that, seven and a half minutes yeah. or more, we see very long round as it came down to it. Dehang even getting that first kill right within the first 20 or 30 seconds of the round. But he did lose control a little bit later on. Ended up getting traded out and brought down to his slash. However, he was able to take back that control. Finally, knock out Cooler's Knicks and take control over the first round. I always love how Cooler kind of smiles to himself after losing a round. Like, he's kind of in disbelief. Like, what? That happen, <laughs> but as we come back into it, we do have that sword like back in play, and this time has managed to survive those first 20 seconds. Now with Mega and a full stack of armor, everything but heavy goes over to Cooler. He's only got LG though, so he's still got to get a rocket launcher, and it's a nice trap coming out of the hang. Can he survive the LG though? Taking him down to 69 health, and this armor is going to be very, very dangerous. The hang can kind of stay on top of the bridge, rain down some rockets, and look for some opportunities for the damage. He's got to be careful though. Cooler's LG will still be very dangerous, even though he doesn't have a rail. There's the pickup from the hang, and he's looking for the hit on the the armor doesn't quite get it. And again, these rails have been the weakest point out of both of these guys. cooler has got that armor built up here now, so the hang no longer has that quick advantage that he can use to get the kill. He got very close, but just not to chase it down. And now he's put himself into a bad situation. Stealth nowhere near ready to go. So the hang made a big mistake diving into that fight. And it's going to give the first kill this round over to Cooler this time. All right, thinking you're safe is uh, never the safe thing to do against Cooler here. You're never quite sure where he's going to pop up. Well, Cooler taking away a rail finally. He's going to need a few more LG cells. There's a nice little detour for those. To hang now back over at Mega's side. Going to be coming up the rocket launch jump pad. Might be able to peek over the bridge or at least hear the heavy armor pickup, getting timing on that item before moving back over towards Mega. So it's going to be a bit of an item trade here. But of course, the important thing to trade is going to be damage. Yeah, now Cooler over here on top of the rocket bridge. It's going to be able to spot the slash moving its way. And he does try to pre fire the spit. However, it's not going to connect very well. But it does leave the asset on the floor if the hang wanted to chase him. But the hang's not really going to be tripped up by that one. He'll just sit nicely, patiently, and wait to see if Cooler's going to reinitiate. And then when he doesn't, well, he's going to be free to move back out and pick up this armor again. It was like, I know you're up there. I know I'm not hitting you. I'm going to leave you up, but I'll be back. And they're going to be colliding back here in mid just as that spit comes back up. But there's an initial rail from to hang. He's going to need a few more of those, as you can see, to whittle down that health stack on that sore leg. But he's moving back up to Rock Launcher Jump Pad, looking for the trap here on this 25. And actually catching him with a direct rocket sliding around the corner. Coming out of nowhere, oh, and he's looking one. for more. And yeah, the damage is so surreal out of to hang now. And another there's one. a third one that puts Cooler on death's doorstep, doing just enough defensive damage to make the hang go and get some 25s. But this gives him the armor. This is now a window of opportunity for Cooler to, well, he's going to be a big, fat, slow lizard without a lot of health stack. And you can see the hang trying to move around very quickly. You can see the quick switch as well over to the rail to try and hit that final shot that would have been needed to take down Cooler. He's going to reinitiate, oh. and there's the rocket. 79 damage will take down the Sorlag and again cause the trade to bring this back down into a 2v2. Same matchup as last round that ended up lasting eons there. It is going to be the Knicks ticking on the slash. I mean, we saw almost none of that fight turn into LG. It was all rockets all the way from Dehang. I think he had like, what, three solid ones before anything happened, but really good way to set things up. But there's the setup from Cooler as well on the armor, kind of anticipating the ghost walk and creating that nice uh, trail barrier. But there's the LG from Cooler. You absolutely have to respect it. I mean, against his uh, games with Claws yesterday, I'm sure his LG has warmed up. Yeah, Dehang now going to be trying to look for that lockdown on the Cooler. He brought him down very low, but he's not chasing down the kill. Focusing more on getting that Mega, so he is going to give Cooler a chance to sort of cover after he's taken down to Hank's second champion. But even with that little bit of MG damage, it's quite a bit at the end of the day when you're going up against the Knicks there. We can see the port up top. Cooler tries to pre-fry him, but misses, and now gets hit by a rail. That's going to force the self pop, but he's not leaving the room. He's staying inside, actually. He's going to kind of go up and down between these steps. He's still trying to hang out underneath over here inside of the armor room, but Dehang thinks he's long gone, so he retreated. He went back over there towards Mega Health. He's going to be looking to pick that back up again. Yeah, guessing that your opponent will be crossing the map when he doesn't can be so disastrous. I mean, he's going to be able to take away this Mega, but time is getting a little bit light for him to find and capitalize on Cooler's weakness. 
but he's going to be crossing over the bridge right now. Actually dropping down. Cooler doesn't exactly have audio on him at the moment. We have a little bit of spam, and there's the Dire Orb looking for the rail from Cooler. There it is. Beautiful shot. Not quite the 90 damage, but he had to take the shot that he had. Looking for another one on the heavy armor, but he's just going to be backing off knowing that he doesn't really need to engage here. Quite the opposite. He can just kind of turtle up, stay hidden, stay safe, and burn out the clock like we've seen Cooler do so many times in the past. Nor can he really because of that one, but a nice trap late. He's going to get some great bounces going on with the Rockets. Picks up the Mega Health to recover some of his HP, and I believe he's going to try and use the stealth aggressively, or at least wanted to change position with it, but his opponent ports away, so he's forced out of the fight regardless. Well, talking about forcing, this is the hang forcing to recover, and now he's only got 30 seconds to quickly grab as many 25s as possible and bring the fight back in. But there's Cooler, opposite side of the map. He's going to be whiffing that rail, but again, he can maintain this distance. It'll be up to Dehang's Dire Orb to close that gap, and there's the nice little fake out, but he actually uses that to go over to the rail side. Beautiful juke, and it turns into a solid rail hit, catching Cooler down here. He still has five seconds before his Ghost Walk is available, and that's just barely over five seconds to make the fight happen. But the rockets from Cooler are so strong, Dehang has to leave it up. He might not be able to push here. He was able to go back in and with that stealth pop, that's going to save. That's all Cooler had to do is wait that up since he got stealth ready to go with that pop. He saves his own life and he saves this round to be able to trade it back and take us up to one to one here on the, map, on the first map. And it was just those last couple rockets from Cooler that saved his life there. Dehang had him dead to rights and one defensive rocket is all it takes to make Dehang think, ah, maybe, maybe not this round. Yeah, you get the great reversal there and, and push Dehang back, brought him down to sub 25 HP on that Ranger. That's really what forced him away from that and left him with not enough time to be able to kill Cooler while he was down on the next. But we're back into it. Cooler gets the spawn over there by the health. Dehang will take the armor start. And that's not health you want to let go over to a sword like so. Dehang going very, very quiet right now. Nice rocket jump to get the height. He's got rail, he's got rockets. And I'm not sure if Cooler actually managed to get over there and take a rail just yet. He can get it relatively for free. Dehang can risk coming around the corner and eating a rail himself. But he's just be creeping his way back up and getting some armor as well. He still has plenty of that mega left over. And even if this turns into an item trade, Cooler still comes out on top. And the hang right now just trying to maintain control over the Mega Health Room. You should be able to hear the hang hopping around, or excuse me, hear Cooler hopping around on there, but the same will be true for Cooler as well. And out finds him into the open, misses that opening rail shot, tries to switch it over to Rockets, but Cooler is already gone. He's falling back, but oh, there we go. There's a nice predicted Rocket. 93 out of 100 damage done on that Rocket right there. And I like this. The hang is actually kind of staying still, realizing that Cooler might be well coming back the way he came. And there's the trap on the Rocket Launcher, and my god, the damage is just amazing. One, two, three Rockets, and Cooler Sorlike is once again taken down. That's the second round now where we've seen Cooler's initials, or excuse me, where we've seen Dehang's initial spawn on the Knicks be able to beat out his spawn on the Sword like there. So he's doing a great job of countering out what previously in this tournament was a huge advantage to Cooler, and that he was able to use almost every single round to just completely decimate opponents. Not so much anymore as so we go down to that mirror matchup again. We spent a, a significant amount of time yesterday discussing just how difficult that is for a Knicks player, and the fact that Dehang has done it so consistently here on Blood Covenant is definitely a testament to, you know, why he's here. Uh, Cooler now looking for a bit of an opportunity to throw some rockets down on the bridge, taking away that armor, but eating the rail. They're in fact trading it. Looks like the rails have indeed warmed up here to hang having to back off. We've got Mega back up for the recovery. I'm not sure Cooler can really do much about it, except maybe pop through this teleporter. He's looking before he leaps, though, and looking for damage. There's the rocket to kind of give away his position. The hang can't really push in. In fact, it's Cooler who dies in just for a moment to see if the hang comes back around that corner ready for a rocket. The armor pickup was really good there that we saw as well. That really saved Cooler's life in the situation because Hang was willing to take that fight. The response rail that he gets finally forces to hang back though and puts him into the situation where he's at now, where he's got great control over the mega health room, but that's pretty much it. Uh, Cooler has Cooler has full control over pretty much every other portion of the map right now, and that's gonna be bad for to hang, especially for hitting himself with the rockets and out. Look at this, he pushes back in, steals the mega health. It'll be a little bit of a risk, but it works, and now puts to hang into a corner. He's got neither power up and he's trapped right here. That was a bit of a risk. I mean, it does mean that Cooler doesn't have his ghost rock for a little while, and to hang managed to not freak out too much and kind of mash that ability button so he still has his ready to play. If he can just find an angle, find some distance on Cooler, he might be able to push in for a fight. Of course, that's going to disappear as Cooler's Ghost Walk comes back up, as well as the uh, the heavy armor for Cooler. So Dehang, once again, going silent. Usually a tactic we see coming out of Cooler, but this time being used relatively effectively. But that LG is strong enough to make Dehang think twice about it, and he's just going to have to watch as Cooler disappears. Cooler uses the uh, stealth to once again go in and steal the Mega Health away after Dehang was trying to trap his opponent. You could see he heard him jumping into the room, just wasn't able to actually spot him 
quickly enough when he went for that mega health pickup. So again, the hang will find himself in a bad situation. Now he changes up his position completely down inside of the LG room and shotgun hallway, leading over into the armor room. He's kind of trying to move all around the lower parts of the map right now to see if he can sneak anything off onto Cooler. Ana takes the jump head back up, but so does Cooler leaping into this room once again using the stealth to get inside of here. But spots his opponent for a moment there. However, loses him, loses him pretty quickly. We'll jump back and just take back control of the Mega again here. This is pretty significant. Cooler is... He's not being quite as still and silent as usual because he knows that he has to run around the map and get those hourglass pickups as much as possible. When it's a Nyx v Nyx game, who has Ghost Walk really ends up being the deciding factor in a lot of these fights. And the fact is, he's been able to pop that ability so much more often than Dehang. Dehang's doing a good job of staying nice and slow and steady and, and hidden, but Cooler just has so many more options available to him right now. Yeah, no, he isn't going to be trapped a little bit, but jumps back out and returns the damage in beautiful fashion against the Hang. This is the problem with the Hang not having a whole lot of control over the props, especially the Mega Health, more importantly there, is, uh, is, is unfortunately one rail, and he's going to be pushed out of the fight pretty quickly. Is if he eats another one or even another, you know, relatively well-placed rocket, he's a dead man very, very quickly, and Hang cannot let that happen right now because he can still win this out on the timer, remember, as well. He got that first kill, and this is now why Cooler is going to get something so aggressive. He knows he needs to trade that back out. To Hang with the bait and switch, though, goes to the portal, jumps back in, and just like that, Cooler's lost him. It's very difficult to make a double tap like that work, and uh, even more difficult to make Cooler completely forget and, and not have any clue where you want or where you went. But we've got Cooler come back into Mega, comes in a little bit blindly, ends up eating a rocket for his trouble. Fortunately, he's able to throw down a defensive one. He's still got height advantage, but against that LG, that might not be much advantage at all. 10 seconds left before the sudden death, and one rail would <laughs> make the frag for either of them. There's the pop from Cooler coming back through the teleporter. Dehang should be able to hear it as he goes invisible himself. Down here in the middle, Atrium, it's gonna be the round going to Dehang. And I think right at the end there, Cooler actually, or excuse me, Dehang was able to get the kill against Cooler, so nicely done from him. You can see at the end there too, Cooler, or Dehang, just had his cool down come back up on stealth and that was what allowed him to save his life. Cooler tried to use his own stealth to sneak back up behind him but the second he had popped that a stealth, Dehang jumped inside of it and that bought him enough time to be able to take it over the five minute mark and win it with a plus one man advantage there. So Dehang gets himself up to map point first. Cooler has to win this round or he's going to drop 0-1 in this best of three series. Jeez, the damage coming out of uh, Cooler's sore like assistant staying there. Dehang barely getting out of the fight of life. But you're right, uh, these guys have spent the last 15 some odd years timing items, timing weapons and now they've got to keep not only their own ability timer in mind, but their opponents. And, you know, the hourglasses make that a little bit more difficult. But there's the, ro well, failed rocket jump, actually, as the rail from Dehang completely shuts down Cooler. Says, nope, you're not coming down this hallway just yet. We are going to be trading items just at about at the right time. Cooler going up top map, heading over towards rail. Is Dehang going to be able to find him as he comes into bridge? Cooler, ooh, actually yes. does get tagged on the yes, way back out. Yeah, he does <laughs> definitely find him. So nice hit him from Dehang, getting a little bit of damage. The Both the power spawns are pretty far away here, too, so... Cooler, as you can see, has a roamer on the map here. Get himself a couple of small armor pickups. Almost another real shot coming up from Dehang, too. Dehang's got to be a little bit careful playing it to this close to the chest, however, as Cooler still has quite a bit of health to play off of here. He hasn't done a whole lot just yet, although that's going to be pretty good. Pulling down a little bit more, however, Mega Health spawn just rolls in, so he's going to be able to save himself. And not only this, but the armor spawn comes out from Dehang, and they meet each other inside of the middle portion of the shotgun hallway. Once again, the defensive rockets from Cooler are fantastic. Almost as good as Dehang's offensive rockets, or at least his spam has found Cooler time and time again here. But now Cooler's back on the hunt, back on the prowl, taking away the small armor up top. There's the rail giving away Dehang's position as they come back into pillars. But Cooler wants to get close and personal and force that Ghost to Walk ability from that Nyx, also stealing away the smaller armor, really removing any opportunity for Dehang for recovery in this fight. We're going for the jump up here now, trying to take the fight. However, he's lost his armor count. Robert also has to hang relatively low, still basically just has his default stack. He has no bonuses currently going right now. That'll change in a second, though, as I believe he is going to get over armored as he goes for the full suit pickup. He'll be able to get that. Get himself a little bit of a boost there, like we said before, though, on the Knicks. That won't last you very long, as the tick down is going to be pretty brutal against you. So he jumps back up, spots his opponent, but cooler. Well, he dives right back down there and chooses to not to take this fight. We're over, well over the two minute mark now, and neither player has a kill. That could change right now, though, as the hang's going to push back in. He steals the mega health away, but the LG work from cooler is too good. It doesn't matter. Dehang gets that Mega Health, but still goes down. He wanted to get in, steal away the Mega, which was fantastically executed, but he also wanted to get out of that fight, but the LG pushing him up against the wall completely denied him that opportunity. So that is going to be back down to Slash for Dehang with just about two and a half minutes left here on this round. Now, Cooler 
He's got the stack, he still has the Sorlac. This is a huge advantage for him. And he's actually been kind of making sure that he's got control of the Mega and Pillars and Small Armor side of the map, denying both of those Small Armors from Dehang. And that could be such a huge deal. Even with the Mega Armor taken away by Dehang, uh, once it goes away, you really don't have anywhere to recover if you can't go down to that Shotgun Armor. But nice rockets and rails from both of these guys as they break away to the other side. And for the first time in a while, Cooler putting some pressure on the Heavy Armor, committing to it, but taking a lot of LG damage. He's got to be careful, though. Dehang is going to be there with his LG, they're both going to be doing a ton of damage to each other, having to break off and recover, but it looks like Cooler is still keeping the pace up, knowing that Mega is at stake. If he can pop through this teleporter and whip out a rail, he might be able to make the frag. He sees actually the hang and the hang knows he came through the portal there, so the hang panicked a bit, went downstairs. There's so many jumped through the portal and that Kohler would be able to get some damage just as he's leaping back out, but he's gonna be happy with going back in and being able to pick up the mega health. And now we're gonna see a repeat of the situation on the other side of the map as once more the hang is trying to take control over the full armor. However, uh, Kohler's I believe might have been trying to leap in there and steal it. He is looking to lock down his opponent. However, a little bit late to the party, mistimed it or just chose not to go directly engage. And now they're gonna end up in another open fight, LG v LG. And no surprise here, Cooler ends up winning it with that much higher health pool. It really does seem like Cooler only ever commits to the heavy armor when he knows that the hang's already there and potentially trapped. Oh, geez, the prediction rocket on the jump pad. Difficult to get that timing right, but 45 free damage is certainly worthwhile for a cooler. He's got to hang against the ropes now. Two champs down with just about one minute left. This is now a ranger for to hang. There is the potential for a dire orb to make this a very quick frag against the Sorlag, but getting the distance, getting the timing, getting the angle right is no small task. Yeah, and he not only needs to take down the Sorlag, but he needs to take down the second small for cooler too, which more than likely going by the history of these last three rounds is probably going to end up being the Knicks. Absolutely. So Cooler starting to go into silent mode as he realizes that the clock is now his best friend. Taking away small armor. I'm sure Dehang was going to be able to hear that. But coming around the corner, is he ready with the rocket? No, he's trying to go for the rail instead. Oh, and Cooler bounce. is making him regret that decision with his own defensive rockets. Not really committing to the fight just yet, but uh, Cooler is actually leaving up that heavy armor, allowing Dehang to go for that grab. He knows, all right, cool. If you want to cross the entire map once, two, once or twice or even three times in order to find me, have fun with that. You've only got 15 seconds to make good on it. Leaving into it, he does trap in the corner, but the spit works its way out. And there you go, Cooler won't even take it to the time. He'll just complete the duel out right, taking down his opponent and bringing this map up to a 2-2 two to two tied scoreline going all the way to round 5. Winner of this one takes map 1 and puts themselves up in the series. That was a really good reaction rocket out of Cooler, but all the same, he didn't know Dehang would be down there. He wasn't expecting that fight, and I think that's a little bit of the, uh, the stress we're seeing on Cooler's face right now. But Cooler spawning pillars, that's exactly where he wants to be. He's able to get LG taking the jump pad up for a rocket launcher. Are we going to see a rocket jump from Dehang? Yes, we are. With a beautifully placed uh, prediction rocket doing a ton of damage to Cooler. He's still going to have plenty of that stack, but there's another rail keeping the pressure on that Sorlag. Dehang is playing with fire right now. We're going to have to see if he can push it forward. He's recovered quite a bit, but though, and Dehang was still a little bit low there at about 50, so he chose not to continue the fight. Was happy with what he had done. Displaced Cooler a little bit. He's going to make him run around the map to get a couple small armor pickups. Uh, but now he's going to be ready to leap back in. And they spot each other again. A little bit of spit connected there under the hangs. So he's actually going to get tickled, trickled down again a little bit. So he'll be brought to right around 50 This armor is so dangerous. Yeah, going up for it. I mean, at least he had his ghost block ability here. But getting out of this fight might not be very easy. So the entire time there, he was thinking, I've done enough, enough damage to Cooler. I can probably get over to Mega without him aggressing on it. But maybe he didn't quite realize just exactly how much stack uh, Cooler had. Already having taken away some of those small armors, but you might be able to catch him here at the 25s or even the jump pad to hang again. Playing with a very low amount of health, one rail would take him down, but there's finally the mega grab for him as Cooler is now forced instead of choosing to go over to the heavy armor side of the map. Yeah, the hang nicely done, uses that power to be able to steal it and trying to work LG on the ledge here against the hang. He's going to pop the stealth, try and go up, take control of the armor to the timing on the rocket, unfortunately, just a little bit off. It almost hit a direct hit against the hang. And now the hang, he's got Cooler on the run a little bit. This would be the time for the hang to really push back in and try to crunch onto Cooler. But first off, he's going to find where he is. He did just spawn him again to the bottom of the pillar room, but Cooler knows this. Pull back away. He'll try to retreat from this fight and look to recover his HP, which he's done pretty quickly and, uh, nice, and uh, very nicely as well. The timers are definitely on his side for the items. However, you have to make a tough choice between going for the Mega yourself or trying to continue the chase, continue the hunt. I mean, Cooler can use that time that you're grabbing the Mega to just kind of disappear, and that's exactly what he's done here. Dehang can grab away all the armors and Megas that he wants, but unless he can find Cooler, Cooler's still going to be sitting with a much, much bigger stack. So Dehang looking for the trap, but he's also going to be worried about getting trapped himself. In fact, we have Cooler going back around to Rail. Dehang kind of sticking out here at Rocket Launcher, throwing out a little bit of spam. That's going to be good information for Cooler. And as he comes around this Cooler, Cooler might be able to look for the Rail. Now he was looking for it, but didn't quite get it. And here's a little bit more item timer delay from Dehang. And 
there's the potential rail from Core, but once again, a miss gives the hang nothing but information and confidence. Of course, it's a pretty delayed rail shot, to be honest. The, the rails in general room have not been very inspiring. The hangs returned a couple nice shots. He's had a little bit of easier time, obviously, going up against the Solag, but now fighting for the armor. It is going to be the Solag that gets it, so the hangs in trouble, stuck in the corner. He no longer has that stealth to run away from this one, so it's cooler that gets the first kill in the final round of map one. 29 health. That was the gamble that Dehang was taking, switching over to rail. He knew that LG versus LG was going to be a, a tough one, and he thought, maybe if I can get out of range, I can throw out that one rail. It'll take too long to get two in, but if I could just get that one, maybe he'll be there. But 29 health is what made that, uh, in the end, a bad bet. He does see the slash spawn work, working its way around the map here too, but with armor spawn coming back up, he's actually not going to be present for it. So he's going to let the hang roll right in, take quick control of that one. There's still another about 15 seconds until we see the mega spawn back up over here in the top of the blue room too. So Cooler still has a little bit of work to do. He's not safe just yet. Although the timer is getting a little bit deeper into the round here, as you can see there at the top. Almost down to about a minute and a half left here in this final round. So if Cooler can keep his one-man advantage, he can still win this one out via the timer and take this first map three to two. And he's starting to pitch a tent here under the bridge as he does, but he's going to be leaving it as he hears the hang taking away that armor. And that's going to be items going over to the hang. The megas and the, the heavy armors are definitely in his favor. Cooler just trying to make sure that the sword like stack is uh, doing him as many favors as possible here. But there's the hang going a little bit quiet. That could turn into a bit of a surprise for either of them. There's the rocket jump. There's the defensive spit. And a bit of it lands on the hang, giving him some more information here as Cooler is able to take away mega health. It's going to be popping back through the teleporter. Might be able to catch him at the rocket launcher. No, it's actually going to be heavy armor chosen by Dehang. One minute left here now, less than a minute actually in Dehang, unfortunately, for Cooler, only really getting hit by the dot on that spit, so Dehang recovers his HP pretty quickly and now is ready to dive into this fight. But again, poor initiation. The spit pushes him back. The trail's not really going to do much to hold Cooler back, but he's not looking for the kill. He's looking to just stay alive here up to the five minute mark so that he can win the round out just via that, just via, just kind of by default here. And now, <laughs> He's going to look to see if he can dodge to hang again, but Dehang has jumped up into a fight. Good bounce, but the fall rocket wasn't too great, and it's going to be Cooler again that takes control. A second kill for him now, and Dehang on his Ranger only has 30 seconds to trade two kills out. That's pretty much impossible. It's a tough situation for Dehang when he has to commit to a fight, and he might have arguably been able to get out of there and then come back around after recovery to finish him off, but it was a tense one, it was a close one, and sometimes you just have to, you know, see what you can do with your rockets. They've been really strong from Dehang so far. There's a nice little fake rocket jump out of Cooler. It's going to be staying quiet. In fact, Dang's under him with the Ranger. Doesn't even realize he's there. There's the victory spit, and Cooler will be taking Blood Covenant off of Dehang. So Cooler takes control over map number one here in this best of three series. One more, and he will indeed take the bronze medal here for QuakeCon. A really close one, though. I mean, you can see that both of these guys were doing a lot of work to get inside each other's heads. Uh, the rail work between them was you know, a lot of misses, but fantastic rockets out of both of them for sure. Uh, this makes the next map, which is arguably going to be faster by default than Blood Covenant, just by merit of not being Blood Covenant. It looks like <laughs> it's going to be Ruins of Sarnath. This one could be brutal. Yeah, so again, as we've talked about in the previous days, this map tends to be a little bit more deceiving in that it appears to be a huge map, but with the way the portals and the jump pads work out, you can make this map a lot smaller with clever portal usage, which most of these players obviously uh, you know, quite, know pretty well how to use those portals properly and how to get around the map and make it much smaller and close in on their opponents. Now we saw on Cooler's player card that he loves him some Scale Bear. We don't usually see that in Blood Covenant. That's where he usually goes with Sorlite, but we have seen him deploy it pretty effectively on Ruins of Sarnath, really taking control of the upper T hallway, which gives him the ability to both look at, you know, Mega, look at the jump pad armor, and also have the ability to punish uh, to hang potentially with rockets and rails out of the teleporter or jump pad on the other side. So it gives you a lot of options. It gives you a lot of information. And, you know, the Mega's not bad either. Remember, guys, once again, that there's a 10 thousand dollar difference in prize pool on the line for the winner of this match so if cooler should win it he is indeed going to be taking home thirty thousand dollars compared to his opponent will only be able to take home twenty thousand dollars both these guys do have that twenty thousand dollars guarantee but a victory in this match will add an extra 10k to that pot you're absolutely right there's a lot of money on the line more than just than much more than any QuakeCon in the past, but these guys have come to QuakeCon before and competed, you know, even if it's not entirely about the money, again, QuakeCon is all about that prestige. There's so much history here. There's so much riding on that QuakeCon champion name, even though they're just playing for, well, I say just playing for third place, but it <laughs> means a lot to them both.
Absolutely. So we'll be jumping into the Ruins map here in just a moment, folks, and getting to see if Cooler will be able to quickly shut down his opponent, Dehang, and take a fast 2-0 victory, or if Dehang will have something more to show us. He did have those two very good victories. It was interesting in the way that Dehang had been varying his playstyle. He started off extremely aggressively, but then he seemed almost scared to take a lot of those fights. For good reason, though, going up against the Sword Like, especially as a Nyx player, it is very, very tough to take a direct head-on fight against the Sword Like simply because of that health differential. He made it work at the beginning simply because of the pure surprise of the situation. That's really only going to work once or twice. That's why we didn't see a whole lot of that in the next couple of rounds. Yeah, you look at those moments where Dehang has to just make a, a, a fight or flight responsible as the timer ticks down. And the situations that got him into that point in the first place, again, that sore lag is just something that he has to deal with very quickly or else it just becomes something that Cooler can rest on for the entire match. All right, well, let's jump into it and take a look here, see if Cooler decided to change anything up. Nope, for the most part, he's sticking with the same right, exact right. rotation. However, DeHang has changed himself up a little bit. He goes away from the Ranger and over to a Galena now, which is going to have a lot more proficiency on this map, mainly because of the portals that we discussed a few moments ago. Absolutely. I do love Galena on here, but I love these oh rockets God. from DeHang as well. He's been so strong with them, and just filling the <laughs> hallway, filling Cooler's face with these rockets is going to be taking down that sword like Again, kind of deja vu from the first round of Blood Covenant, but coming back in here for the play on Mega. Still two seconds before it. Cooler's a little bit early, but he pops his Ghost Walk. There's the punishment from the Slime Trail, potentially, but it's not quite there. There's the rockets from DeHang for another extra 47 damage against a, a Nyx. That'll go pretty far, but now he's expecting him at the armor, looking for the rail. Doesn't quite make the shot, but he's going to be down at LG, has to either duck back through the teleporter hallway or take that jump pad. DeHang is just going to be crossing to the other side of the map, hoping to catch him over here at the Hourglasses. And yeah, it was a good read. Cooler has definitely been making good use of all those Hourglass power-ups, and DeHang knew exactly where to find him. The hang has worked just with his prediction rockets alone have been beautiful there, and especially with the way he was able to lock down this sword like right at the beginning. I'm curious to see how Cooler is going to adapt to that in later rounds. He was able to fix that problem uh, back in the last month there because we saw a very, very similar opening. As you said, it was pretty much like deja vu for what we saw happening back on Blood Covenant, but Cooler was able to adjust this pretty quickly going into rounds two, three, and beyond. So we'll see if that'll be the case again here or if he's going to get tripped up by that continuously throughout the course of this map due to the hang's very well placed aggression showing up again. That's what I'd like to see from him. I'd like to see more of that. Really great rail down at the armor. I mean, Cooler was actually kind of in trouble there, but Dehang was leaving it. He wanted to make sure that he was taking over the rest of the map, taking some of those tw uh, 25 armors away, and also taking away this Mega. So we have Cooler down in the rail hallway, someplace that's already been a bit of trouble for him before. And once again, down here at the heavy armor, his timing is going to be pretty good, but Dehang is already on top of him. That's forcing the Ghost Walk. Dehang is now forcing the run, making sure to fill that alcove with a little bit of slime trail just in case Cooler was going to hang out there. And now Dehang forced away over here to the small armor side. He was going to be trying to reset this fight a little bit for a better way to reinitiate against Cooler, but Cooler's been pretty sleuthy himself. Uh, he sneaks up the steps a little bit there, tries to find Dehang, but Dehang is not phased. He returns that damage onto Cooler there. Keeps him on max HP, but Whittle's done quite a few, quite a bit of his armor, and now the LG work. This is where he's got to be a little bit careful. Dehang has had some bad commitments to LG fights before, but he leaps in with the rockets this time and secures a second kill very, very quickly. One rocket to mess up the jump, the other one to finish him off. This is now just going to be Ranger for Cooler here. We have a, a one damage rocket to open things up, but Dehang is looking for a lot more than that. He's going to go in for the kill, and there it is. So that's quick control from Dehang. We haven't seen the likes of that very uh, very much so in previous in previous matches or previous rounds back on the last map. But when he did win, it was a very slow-paced battle. This time he kicks up the heat very, very quickly. And that's going to throw Cooler off a little bit here. There is that crocodile smile, though, as he loses a round. It's got to be very intimidating if you're, if you're looking at him. But Dehang, I'm sure he's got his focus on the game here. As do I. We've got Dehang taking away Mega, starting out with that Slash. A little bit of a beefier startup against that Sorlag. It might have some something else to do with it, especially since Sorlag uh, might be stuck by that Slime Trail much more often. Another solid rocket. Even though Dehang is taking some damage from that Acid, he's going to be getting out of there. Nice little bit of damage from Cooler there. Keeping the pressure on, for sure. The rocket work in general here coming out from Dehang. Again, just a compliment on that one. And ooh, even that's his opponent a little bit with the explosion there. So Cooler taking a bit of extra heat from it. But you'll note, Cooler does not get tripped up that time by the initial initiation. He's got to be a little bit careful diving into this fight, but great LG work. At the moment, Dehang has no way out, so this time it's Cooler that gets the first kill. All right, so again, coming into the second round, very strong once again for Cooler. It's going to be taking away a bit more LG as we have him controlling away the rail just for a moment. And moments like that, I mean, when you're playing the clock like Cooler likes to, uh, that weapon control can be so very important. The more fights that Cooler can take against Dehang, knowing he doesn't have a rail, knowing that he doesn't have maybe even a rocket launcher, uh, all go to his favor. But there's LG taken. Dehang's going to be coming back in for that rail, but he's uh, watching very carefully in that hallway. Cooler's going to have to break off the fight. There's the force of the Ghost Walk, but now he's stuck. Cannot go for the armor, cannot go for the frag, and Cooler will be taking him down. This means that we finally see Galena getting pulled into play here for Dehang.
unlucky for Dehang there, though, to be able to have Cooler completely track him down, once again, down into the big armor room. So with that said, Cooler will take fast control over the situation again and brings this down to a 3v1. And we're only a minute and a half into the round. So Dehang, he does have plenty of time to trade these frags back, but ultimately is going up against a very, very big disadvantage here. Even though he has the Galena. Oh, he's actually going to be able to get the totem explosion there, but Cooler holds on, returns that damage. And they pretty much end up at even HP at the end of the fight. And now Cooler's going to try to hold his opponent back. More rocket damage being done. He steals the full armor suit away, but is not going to continue that fight. His overall HP is still very, very low, so he's not going to be too keen on trying to take a fight versus uh, the hang there, especially considering that's just a closed-off hallway. Wow, actually being able to take a totem fight there and to hang with that rocket, uh, getting the frag on, on Cooler's uh, sword like that definitely opens this round up. Uh, being able to survive that initial confrontation as Galena, when you only have that totem to act as a small barrier between you and your opponent, it usually doesn't go your way. But the fact that it did, and the fact that the hang even dropped down into the heavy armor room to do a little bit of extra damage against Cooler, well, you can see the results here. This has definitely made this a match. And now for Dehang, oh, nice little fadeaway rail there too against Cooler. Great damage being done from him. He's got the first kill. If he can lock down the second kill right here, he can bring it right back down to another 1v1, and he's almost got it. There you go, there's the kill. Cooler makes the last ditch attempt to try and turn that back around with rockets, but Dehang has so much HP to play with here now, there's no way Cooler was gonna end up winning that fight. It's definitely a bad place to get stuck as a Nyx, even with the Ghost Walk. There's not really a good place to go, but Dehang's gonna be finding himself in a bit of trouble here against the Ranger. Really good Dire Orb usage to take control of that armor, but there's the LG as well the totem to keep the hang alive, swinging in the round, and taking another one off of Cooler. Absolutely beautiful stuff from Dehang. Remember, he was down 3v1 at one point in that fight and had to recover all the way back. You can see Cooler shaking his head now. He's not happy about the way things played out there as he got completely destroyed just by one single champion spawn from Dehang. So let's jump into it now. The third round could be the last round as well if Dehang just is able to 3-0 the second map. That is a tough spawn for both of them there, but Dehang avoiding that fight, making sure just to slip on through, get the grab for the rail and LG as well as the armor and come back over the top of the map. And if he's going to be looking for Cooler at the Hourglasses once again, and usually that's a safe place for Cooler. He can get some Hourglasses, he can bide a little bit of time, he can get some information, but Dehang has found him there and done damage so consistently, Cooler might need to rethink that positioning. But Dehang putting a little bit of pressure on from the rail, dropping down for the armor for the good timing, eight seconds before Mega comes back up, and he actually has priority on the positioning here, if not the, you know, map awareness for where Cooler's gonna be entering in from. So he's gonna be playing a little bit safer. He's actually gonna be leaving that Mega up as Cooler goes for the grab. Yeah, and Dehang now is going to try to trap Cooler a little bit. He thought he would jump over here inside of, inside of the spawn room, but not the case. Cooler sticks inside of that mid-upper hallway. Chooses not to go and directly engage over here. I like that Dehang took one hourglass from that platform as well. If you can get the timing split on it, you can make sure that anytime Cooler does decide to go there, he's only getting half of the benefit. Nice little attempt on the rocket splash from Dehang. He's now taking a safe armor. It's going to sync up the items quite a bit, however. And so if Cooler's able to get back over towards Mega, he can make that sword like very, very healthy. Dehang, oh, beautiful rail just sliding on by. We've seen many of that here on Rune Sarnath from Dehang earlier on in the series. And now Dehang actually moving back in for Mega. He's got the room, he doesn't have the timing just yet, but he's potentially putting this armor at risk as well. If he wants to dive down for the heavy armor room, uh, that's never a clean fight, and I'm sure that's exactly what the hang needs right now. He knows Cooler's down there though, so he knows exactly where he's at. He's pretty sure he knows he's gonna get this pickup here in a second too, so the hang will just look for the mega find. And there we go, spitting out the trail as well, just to make sure in case Cooler tried to play speed demon there, that he wouldn't be able to successfully follow him. Just self-security more than anything else, and now they just sit on the opposite sides of the map. Both of them are gonna go relatively quiet, although the hang stays quiet for a very short amount of time. We'll jump back into it. He might have just been able to see the top of Cooler right there. And this is where Dehang has to be very careful while sneaking around not to pick up any items and giving away his position. We do have Cooler dropping down onto Rail. And he's going to be looking for a bit of damage on the armor. Really good initial rocket to open things up. Not a lot of damage, but at, at least keep the hang off his back just for the moment as he's able to take that armor once again. Mega, though, has gone over to Dehang, though. And if you are playing against the Sorlag, if you have a choice between the Mega and the armor, go for the Mega for sure. Well, Cooler has himself the full armor spawn along with that massive health pool, so there's no reason why he wouldn't be able to dive into a fight now. We've gone two and a half minutes. Neither one of these players have been able to pick up an early kill, so finally Cooler's gonna be the one to start the fight. Good work with the LG. A little bit of damage done with the spit here too, but not a massive amount. And to hang the reversal at the last second. Beautiful rail from him, and he's able to win the first duel again. Just like Cooler, I did not see that one coming. To hang choosing a close range fight there against the Sorlag. My bets were not on him, but there's a beautiful rocket once again coming out of to hang. He's able to throw up the trail, denying the jump pad 
had and going for the Mega Health and coming right back into LG Room. He's going to be a little bit late to catch Cooler there. Oh no, Cooler came back in as Cooler does, but this is now potentially a trap Cooler as getting out of here is not going to be easy. The Hang though is going to be sliding back out, anticipating that Cooler had already left. Cooler doing the really kind of risky but had to go for it moment where he just kind of went invisible and stood his ground. The last thing that somebody can expect. The Hang's still a little bit of a rough patch here that you can see he's going around trying to get a couple small armor pickups. The Mega Armor is still very much going to be Cooler as it has been for pretty much this entire round so far. But the Hang looking to hold things off with the spam coming out from the nail gun there. Holds him away for a little bit, but ultimately Cooler is going to jump right back in. He's ready to take the next fight, but now the Hang has a little bit more health to play with, so he's going to be better off to take this engagement. Absolutely, so the Hang taking a little bit of that cell damage, moving very quickly through the eyeball room. He's got 10 seconds before armor comes back up. He's actually moving back along his, his slime, but didn't look the other way. Cooler, though, with the shot, giving to hang nothing but information here and the opportunity for a nice, clean rocket. Cooler's definitely on the ropes here. And even that rocket doing a little bit of damage, keeping him on tilt. And to hang can come back over the top of the map and get a very clean grab of this mega. Cooler is right below him with the LG, doing a little bit of damage, but to hang is still on the move. Dehang as well only has an extra minute here now, a little bit less than that to be able to actually trade, or excuse me, Cooler has that one minute to be able to trade this kill against Dehang. He's down at the moment, a champion. He lost that sore lag, so he needs to come back very quickly. Otherwise, Dehang is going to be able to win this out via the timer and take control of map number two, tying this series up at one to one. Cooler stuck down below right now, just on the steps leading up into the mega armor room. He goes back down to grab the armor itself and will take the jump pad. He can really only take one, another fight, maybe two, against his opponent. So the next engagement, he has to close out Tries to sneak it in with the rail. He'll miss the opening shot. He's trying to hide himself a little bit here, but so is the hang. As he knows, in 20 seconds, he's going to be able to win this series or win this map just by falling back and staying away from this. Now, getting him into the open here. It's an open fight, but the problem is it's too long range. He needs to close the gap a little bit more. Cooler, I'm not sure if he's not reading the timer or something, but he just can't find the proper position to take this commitment. And ultimately, in three seconds here, it is going to be the hang that takes control over this and takes control of the map. Fan. Three to nothing. Fantastic play out of Dehang there on Ruins Sarnath. He's always been a great guy when you're expecting him to, to be able to ev evade a fight, to go for the sting damage and go for those hit and run moments. And that's exactly what we usually expect out of Cooler as well. But when you see the, those kind of similar styles clash, you know, you can, you can spot all sorts of differences in the execution, but the ideas are very, very similar. But nicely done. This will indeed be going into a tiebreaker. Who is expecting this for the third place match? Cooler versus Dehang at QuakeCon 2017. And dominant form shown by Dehang in that matchup there. Our first snap over on Blood Covenant, for those that missed it, went all the way to all five rounds, was back and forth the entire time. But this one, it's all Dehang all day long, even including a round where Kohler starts it off with a massive advantage, brings it all the way down to a 3v1 in his favor. And on the last champion spawn for Dehang over on a Galena, he still manages to win that round. And it looks like we are indeed going over to Blood Run, a map that I know that uh, Tim really does favor in Quake Live, in Quake 3. Whether or not that's true here in Quake Champions, well, that's kind of what we're here to find out. But this will indeed be the tie-breaking map. I'm, it's got to be very stressful for both of these guys. Uh, I'm excited as well. <laughs> yeah, it comes down to this essentially. One map for an extra $10,000 in your pocket as you leave QuakeCon here today. We'll get to see which of these two players will be able to take it. This is their last chance now to try and earn a little bit of extra cast as obviously Hang and the rest of his team did not make it through to the finals and sacrifice. This is the last chance for him here. And again, a little bit of a difference in focus. I mean, Cooler came here for duel and uh, that's exactly what he's, he's been excelling at. Dehang was also playing in Sacrifice, and Tossfight kind of mentioned, you know, if you if you lose your, your match in Sacrifice, it's gonna take you down a notch or two, you know, in terms of morale, but it looks like Dehang is right on target and doing just as well as we usually expect out of him. Yeah, so let's get ready, guys, to jump into this one here now, as we should be getting into the champion selects pretty soon, too, and being able to see exactly if there's going to be any more chain trips. I imagine the hang would stick with the Galena now, since we're going over to Blood Run yeah. here, as I, I mean, we've, we've seen so much Galena usage on this map because of how portal heavy it is. Absolutely, I do love Galena in, in Blood Run. The, the spawns on Blood Run can uh, turn into some really swingy fights, so it's one of those maps where the first frag can really turn into a bit of a landslide if you're not careful, but. Careful really defines both of these characters' styles, and I'm expecting this one to be a close one. Yep, we should be ready to jump into it, guys. Here in just about a half a minute, we should be good to jump into this matchup. You can see the players are getting warmed up here now and getting ready to jump into it. So let's go into it, and let's find out who's going to be our bronze medalist here for the Quake World Championships in Duel for 2017. 
All right, we've got Cooler spawning at the lower armor. He's taken away that Mega, but pausing real quick, making a quick pit stop to throw down a rocket onto Hang as he takes away that uh, heavy armor. And uh, definitely did pay off for him. This is going to be Cooler with a massive stack. But once again, we've seen Dehang seemingly able to solve the, the sword like problem many times here in the series. We've got Cooler down below, not really popping up just yet. There's the rocket jump actually to put oh, the pressure the on to Hang. That's going to force the Ghost Walk, and Cooler doesn't take much damage for his trouble. So now he's got about 40 seconds to kind of run down to Hang. Managed to push him back at least a little bit here. So now he's got great control over the Mega as he's going to go right back in. He still has a lot of that excess health, so he's going to delay the timer just a little bit here. I think he's listening as well to try and see if Cooler goes back up on top there to steal it away, but doesn't actually see, or doesn't actually see to hang trying to go for that armor pickup. So he's just going to hop right up and take it. Now he's got both power ups right from the start of the round. Not something you want to let a sword like have, but rockets like that are keeping to hang safe for the moment. Uh, I mean, again, the the items don't really do much good to the Nyx as a Nyx, but it's really good to be able to deny those items from that Swirlag. -like. But Dehang kind of playing it safe there, just going for the damage, and all of the extra health has been knocked off at, at least. Now they're going to be looking for those traded rails. And again, just like in Blood Covenant, everything's going a little bit wide. We're going to be depending more on the rockets here. But here comes another potential trade. But Cooler leaving it up, going back through Teleporter, making sure he's in a good position on this armor. But it's going to be a classic positioning here. Going to have to go for the rocket jump, but it's going to open up to a rail, a rail that once again goes wide from Dehang. Decent combo coming back out from Dehang there, though, and what he was able to do. Unfortunately, a lot of it gets negated by Cooler's quick pickup of the Mega Health. Uh, now jumping back in here, he is looking for the duel. He actually spots him over here in the side room, but Cooler returning a lot of the damage over onto the LG. He'll leap through the portal, try to head him off back over here, right below where the full armor spawns. Won't be successful in doing so, but leaps over his opponent's rockets. Gets tagged a little bit by that one. However, again, he's got that Mega Health spawn working in his favor, so negates all, pretty much all the damage that Dehang just did. And look at a load Dehang has put himself. Cooler's running through that teleporter. Not exactly knowing where Dehang's going to be at, and that rocket really didn't give him any information either. It's not too stressful for him, though. He's still able to run around and get all of these items at will, though it does make his routing a little bit more predictable. And that's the last thing you want to do when you're either of these guys. But he's going to be actually breaking off the route just a little bit here. Taking a look at the stairs, not quite finding to hang just yet. He's being really quiet, being really careful up top here in the corridor. There is a nice little five damage rocket giving Cooler that notice of where Dehang's at and where he might be moving. Looking for the rail. Dehang wasn't really quick out of the with the rail gun out of that uh, out of that hallway, but there's the rocket jump now, and there's the grab. Oh man, the damage out of both of these rockets is insane, but Dehang is now on death's doorstep, and those 225s will be going over to Cooler instead. It's a good thing that Dehang was able to pick up that armor, is that's the only thing that saved his life in that situation right there. You can see it. The two, the two uh, bits of damage combined on the, those two rockets were 150, which yeah. easily would have melted at that Nyx had he not had the extra armor. A couple <laughs> nails and one rail. Kind of even the table here for Dehang, or at least as even as you can expect against the Swirlite. -like. Coming back into the armor room, Dehang is going to be just kind of standing up here, being incredibly loud about it, but getting the grab. There's a little bit of a trap from Cooler, looking for the <laughs> rail as well, but doesn't quite nail it in. Dehang is going to be able to escape back through this teleporter and be ready with more rockets. We can see the much slower pace being deployed by both of these players, too. Dehang's going to sit in the blood pool, heal himself a little bit through that, since, well, Cooler chose pretty much not to push him throughout that entire duration there. Cooler now, we can in, connecting at least one more rail onto, or excuse me, Dehang connecting at least one more rail onto Cooler there, bringing him down a little bit lower, but ultimately, again, nothing significant done to Cooler since he still has that massive health pool that Dehang would have to melt away. This is a map. Oh, really beautiful. There we rail. Go. Looking for another one. There's the LG coming off of the armor, and Cooler is nailed against the wall. That is going to be a lizard falling to the ground. Prone. Nicely done by Dehang there. Locks Cooler into a situation where he has no hope for escape. Desperately wanted to try and keep control over that full armor suit and had to pay the price for it. He got locked into that position by the LG. And oh, it could happen again. But oh, Dehang as well. Getting hit with a head on rocket shot. And hello, it's Cooler coming out of stealth to get that trade kill and bring it down to a 2v2. And we have Galena now coming out as the second champ for Dehang. Bringing him out a little bit earlier, or her rather, a little bit earlier, ready to pull out those totems and make good use of them. A cooler, though, fully stacked up as that Nyx, looking for another very quick turnaround as Galena is still going to be looking around for those items, looking around for those weapons. There's a small window of opportunity here for Cooler to do some free damage, but as we have to hang on top of the <laughs> oh, platform, oh my, he drops down, goes for the rocket, gets the lock and the pop, all of the above, and a beautiful frag out of the hang completely for free. It's just a matter of less than a second. He completely melts it. Beautiful combo kill coming out from Dehang. He's gone from, you know, you know, waiting in the backside here to having full control over this round currently. And look at the timer, too. Only 20 seconds left here now for Cooler to try and pick up an additional kill. 
And if you want to slow down the game, I mean, Galen is certainly a great choice here. Dehang is actually going up here to the armor room, which is, you know, it's a good place to recover, and also it's a difficult place to really force a fight. If you want to push into this room to, to fight your opponent, it's going to be a messy one. You're going to be taking a lot of damage as well, especially if you're trying to come up that jump pad. It's going to be good rockets coming out of Cooler, but the timer favors the hang. Cooler had him so low as well. 28 HP left on hang there right at the end of that round of his Galena, but he was able to make it outside, so hang takes control over round number one here. Two more to go, and he'll be able to win out this map. It looks like we get series. to watch this frag again. There's the rocket, and bam! Oh, it was even just her ankle! Ah, oh, jeez. You can, see it, you can see it even clipping off the uh, the gateway there a little bit as well. Just a small <laughs> portion of it. It just barely made the connection against Cooler there, but still really well done from the hang. A beautiful combo kill. Ghost walks and ghost shots, but here we go into the next round. It's going to be Cooler back up on that sword like taking away the Mega. Dehang immediately going for a trap here on the Rocket Launcher. And again, his accuracy is just on point here. It's going to mean that Cooler is going to get that Rocket Launcher eventually. And the Spit could actually be a prompt for him here on oh, the no. 225s. Oh, all right. So you come through that teleporter. You have 225s either at the pillar or directly to your left. And uh, I don't want to, you know, tell Dehang what to do, but that might have been the safer play. <laughs> well, Dehang. Takes the situation a little bit too close for comfort, and as you can see, ends up killing himself. Probably would have died regardless there. And, oh, what's even worse now is the LG is going to take him down again. So quick reversal coming back out from Cooler in round two as he's taking very dominant control. I mean, we're still under a minute into the round, but the Hang's already down to his last champion here. That Dire Orbs could certainly turn things back around, but Cooler's going to be making it difficult with these early rails. He can come through this teleporter pretty quickly, but he's going to make a quick stop for the Mega. And actually going up to the smaller armor room, I like this. He might be able to flesh out to hang here to the other side and make this a really close-range fight on the heavy armor if the Hang chooses to, to set up and show up. It looks like he's going to be leaving it open just for the moment. He's actually going back over himself and kind of crossing the map, making sure he's got LG as well as Rocket Launcher, but it's not really giving him a good position to do any damage against Cooler. The rail that connected, though, already brought the hangout very low. And he, as you can see, it's causing to play a very, very passive style to this round. So he's going to be holding back. He's trying to play this very careful for obvious reasons. He's, up, you know, he's down to his last life here. But other reasons as well, considering his health pool had been reduced by quite a bit. He's been able to recover that now. But positionally speaking, he's still kind of outmatched by Cooler. So he's going to be very careful about how aggressively he dies back in. And there we go. There's the spit. Dehang was able to dodge a lot of the damage, but he's still down 75 HP. And one more rocket will do the trick as it's Cooler. <laughs> what is that <laughs> that takes control over round number two? All right, Cooler showing us what Voguing's like. But, uh, oh, man. Well, good stuff. I mean, Dehang was going for that dire orb. It can be that instant turnaround. But if you miss it... Uh, you're kind of uh, in a bad spot. That's exactly where Dehang was left. He had to go for it. The timer was not going to be nice to him. He needed to remove that sore lag. Had to go for broke, but he broke. Oh, looked a little bit annoyed there. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, he does win the round, so he's back into this one. Tying it up at one to one. Two more to go for either of these players to be able to take control over the series now as we are on the final map. Cooler getting bounced actions. So there's an opportunity, but the LG works so, so strong. Dehang just barely getting out of there with the stealth pop and now trying to look for it, but he looks the wrong way. Tries to respond it with another spit. Look at how low Cooler's health is. It's Dehang that moves in the with shotgun. the super shotgun to close out on the first kill. Fantastic read and fantastic chase from Dehang. Again, yeah, he took so much LG damage there, but he had to realize, all right, I've heard him. He's on the run. I'm not going to let him get away. It's it's going to be Nixon on Nixon. It's going to be a very quick one. Oh my god, dang! Does he have magnets in his rockets? Absolutely insane. And that is going to be down to Ranger in the first minute of this round. And again, we're getting very, very close to the closing of the series here. Dehang looking for one more rail. Oh, he actually goes through the teleporter just before he has that opportunity. Cooler a little bit later on it, but we have armor coming up as well as Mega in just a couple seconds. Dehang is looking for Cooler to recover to the small armor before committing to the heavy one. Very nicely done there. And there's the Dire Orb. Really good damage and actually enough of a pop to make it difficult for Cooler to do anything in return. Dehang is doing some great work again here. Look, jumping back up. There's the rockets once more and Cooler can do absolutely nothing to avoid that. It's Dehang that dominates again and it's all rockets all day long for Dehang. The Rockets and Quake Champions don't have the biggest uh, splash damage compared to games like Quake World, but look at this. He's just making just so many direct hits and near direct hits all the time, chaining them up and taking Cooler down. Well, let's jump back into it now here, guys. It is going to be map, match, and series point here for Dehang if he's able to take control of this one. 
and he'll be able to push through, claiming that bronze medal here for QuakeCon 2017. Let's take a look and see if he's going to be able to do it, or if Cooler still has a little bit of fight left in him. All right, so to hang back up at small armor, actually leaving that armor up for the moment, because now in Quake Champions, you can actually hear that from the central atrium. So he's not wanting to give away his position completely to Cooler just yet. You can see that Cooler's not exactly sure what's going on. He's going quiet himself. He's exposing himself to these nails, taking a bit of free damage from Dehang. That allows Dehang to go for the heavy armor. Cooler's going to trade it off with the Mega and Small, which is still great for Cooler, but he's also having to react to where Dehang is moving instead of what I'm sure Cooler wants. They're both going to sit on opposite sides of the map right now, controlling either one of the initial power response. Kohler hoping he can find Dehang pushing into this portal, but not to be the case. He will catch him into the open room, but whiffed rail from Cooler. He'll get hit a little bit by the rockets, but nothing significant. Really just takes down his armor count a little bit more than anything else. All right, so I like this potential trap on the Mega. You can't exactly see the Mega from this position, but you can throw down a few rockets, look for some splash damage, even using the Tribolt. But Cooler's showing that, hey, I've got a rocket launcher too. I can do some serious damage with it. But there's the Mega taken by the Hang for the recovery. Doesn't have a lot of armor just yet. Popping through the teleporter. Cooler's still expecting him to be down there. But is this going to mean he can come up these stairs for free? He's being really aggressive here in mid-map. He's going to know exactly where the Hang's at. He's got the information. He's going for the kill, or at least the force of the Ghost Walk. He's going to be breaking off the fight. He's accomplished his mission, and now he's going to be spending these next 20 seconds or so looking for a finisher. Yeah, he's going to be able to move back in. He gets free control over the Mega Health here. He's going to try and deny the armor pickup, I believe, but he probably won't be able to do that too successfully. Although, hold on now. Jumps back up, and all of a sudden, the Hang trying to play with the LG, but not going to happen. Just leaps himself into a corner where Cooler gets the midair to get the first kill. Cooler's still down at 75 health here. We've got the Hang spawning up as Galena. It looks like he's down in the hallway, making sure he's got a grab of that LG. Should have a rocket launcher as well. And he's actually down at the jump pad. Cooler's going to see that explosion and come up right behind him. There's the splash on the acid spit. Cooler's now pushing forward here, trying to finish off this damage, but he's got to be careful. One or two rockets could spill the difference between life and death. Trying to push back in, trying to get that mega health, but no, Cooler denies it. And the quick turnaround again to take down the Hang. It's now Cooler in control in a 3v1. Oh man, I think we're very, very close now to going five, uh, three maps and five rounds on pretty much all of them here. As Cooler is going to be looking for a rail on now this Ranger coming out of the hang. It's going to be a long time before any of the items are up, so it's nothing to play for but position, weapons, and, well, knowledge at this point. Cooler, back up top of the map. And there's the nails coming out of the hang. We've got a rocket being thrown up by Cooler, but not quite committed to the fight just yet. He's looking for the play through the teleport. It's going to be traded off potentially between the Mega. Actually, no, Cooler's diving down for it. There's the punishment on the LG. Cooler wasn't expecting him to be quite that accurate. And there's the play on the Dire Orb. The hang committing not only to the fight, but to the heavy armor as well. He doesn't have the grab just yet here. It's going to be a little bit dangerous. There we go, finally getting it, as Cooler is going to be recovering here in the small armor room. Cooler's still trying to fall back and recover, as he said, going into the small upper room. He's going to be able to get that pickup. Uh, still looking for a couple health bubbles there, too. But finally, that one spawns back in. He's going to be able to go back up to 150 health. His max HP on the sword like there. And to hang. Well, he's still holding on. He managed to get that armor pickup, but he's still sub 100 HP, which is his max pull on the Ranger there. And now he gets the Mega. He's got that pickup at the very least, but Kalu still got him on the run, so he's got to be careful. He's going to try to use this dart, change with the narrative a little bit, jumps back in. He misses his jump, though, so his mobility is going to be a little bit messed up going into this fight. Dropped to 36 HP, just barely makes it outside. That rail would have done it for him there, and you can see that the clock is starting to go against a hang here. He needs to make a frag, he needs to take down the sword like, and there's the opportunity for the LG, barely holding on to life here as his dire orb comes back up. Cooler is going to be actually recovering or actually staying in the little blood pool by the teleporter. Can't blame him for that, especially as he wants to waste as much time and avoid the close range dire or potential from Dehang. Kohler at this point is definitely looking to delay. You can see how passively he's playing it now over by the other teleporter here on the bottom floor. Looking to completely avoid the engagement if he can by any means necessary. And I mean, he's been sitting there for a good, he's been sitting there for a good 20 or 30 seconds now before he finally actually moves through the portal, tries to trap the hang, doesn't really work out. It actually gives the hang control over the armor. So the hang has both these pickups now. He's got quite a bit of excess health. If he can lock down Kohler, he should be able to get the kill. It is a dilemma that you force your opponent into when they have to choose between getting item control and finding you. And with time ticking by, the hang just coasts on by a Kohler. Finally turning Spots around it. and spotting his forehead, going in for the shot, going in for the dire orb, but he misses it. Can he make the LG work for him? No, he can't. Cooler will be able to pull it out and get the round. And so with that, we go to round five, just like on map number one. This one seemed like it was all going to go to the hang, but all of a sudden, Cooler has found some new life. He's bought himself another ticket back into this map, and potentially a ticket that might be worth $10,000. And, you know, bragging rights, that too. Yeah, that too. <laughs> but as we get into it here, Dehang committing to an early heavy armor. That's kind of dangerous as a Nyx, especially seeing Cooler's LG being so on point today. That's going to force Dehang over to the small armor. Once again, delaying the pickup, not so much for the timing, but just to make sure that that audio cue doesn't really go over to Cooler. In fact, I'm sorry, he's already got full armor, so he can't even pick it up anyway. So, you know, good on me.
<laughs> All right, so Dehang, top of the map, this is definitely a favorite place for him. He doesn't have a rocket launcher, he doesn't have rail, he doesn't have LG. He's kind of in trouble here as Cooler can take away the Mega, but also take position on these weapons completely. Dehang is finally going to decide that it's safe to go for the rocket. There it is. And we've seen how dangerous his rocket launcher can be, but with that Nyx, can he make it work out close range? Dehang is swinging downstairs here too. He's looking for his opponent to try and go for a steal on the Mega Pickup. Remember right now, Dehang only has the rockets. It's a bit, of a, a bit of an interesting statement considering how proficient to hang has been with the Rockets so far in this series. But finally, he's going to be able to jump down, get himself a rail, and I believe swing over to get the LG in a moment here too. He's going to be hiding it out from the delay, but here comes Cooler jumping back in, and the hang immediately pops his stealth the second his opponent moves back in, and I was quickly going to Rocket jump himself over there, gets the Mega Health pickup. He does get tagged by a rail on the way back, but most of the damage is eaten back up by the Mega Health anyway. Yeah, I'm sure he wanted to time that so that the rail was doing damage after the Mega pickup, but that still leaves Cooler with a ton of health. Not a lot of armor here, but the hang still showing that he can get give it out a fight, even when coming out of that Ghost Walk being used defensively. So he's going to come back up top map. Might be able to catch Cooler over here at Rock Launch. No, he's going to stay back over at Small Armor. Cooler moving up Staircase here as they both go a little bit quiet. Yeah, trying to get a good position as to where the other one's going to be headed here. And you can see Dehang trying to sneak back in there to take control over the Mega. He gets the spawn this time. Armor coming back up in a moment here as well. Cooler should be able to get quick control over that one. The quick drop rocket jump, although Dehang is going to look to stop that. The spit connecting, he's going to leap over, get the armor very quickly. As he is brought down a little bit low, at least for a sore lag anyway. The spit is enough to force Dehang back. He'll be forced away from this fight. And again, both these players will just reset. Did Dehang even get the 225s by the stairs? I'm not sure I saw I don't that think there. So. He's going to be coming around here. Yeah, he actually kind of had the opportunity, but there's the Ghost Walk, and he's got just enough health to kind of back up through Cooler and go the other way with it. He should be able to take uh, some armor up here. We have Mega taken by Cooler. And again, that just gives him so much more fuel to make this fight happen. Go full plus forward. It's still 30 seconds before that comes up, but there's the, the acid. Kill. Yeah, exactly. 50 health left, though, for Cooler. He's got to be really careful as Dehang spawns up as Galena. And so Cooler holds on, only barely though, 75 HP, and he still could be chased down by this Galena right now. And that's exactly what the Galena is going to try and do for Dehang there. Trying to knock out Cooler, although he's giving him a lot more room to maneuver. Back out into the open, was thinking he'd go to the side armor room. Not the case, a rail connects on the Cooler, but he's going to dive right back down to the blood pit. He's got a little bit of room here, can recover some of his stuff. Oh, there's the totems, you got to be careful about that. Walks right into another one, that's going to be 75 more damage than the Cooler. Not only damage, but now realizing which way Cooler was going, and getting information of Blood Run can sometimes be the entire game. Both of them at railable health here. In fact, a bit more damage. Oh, it was a rocket jump taken by Dehang to get the heavy armor. Nice rocket pop. And he found him on the bottom. Doesn't quite do it. They're both at just about 25 health. Now we got Cooler taken away a little bit here and biding some time, waiting for the 225s by this hallway to spawn, making sure that Dehang still isn't lurking outside. Yeah, both those guys are very low to going down. Cooler has this Double health bubble spawn, though, so he's going to be able to keep himself in pretty good shape. The small armor's right here, too. It's a pretty good place to camp back out and recover some HP, as we've seen both these guys try to do throughout the course of this map so far. But we have seen Dehang now trying to move over there and look for that. He also has heard the armor spawn come back up. Cooler's trying to trap it, but no, Dehang is leaping right into combat there to try and force Cooler out of the room so that he can safely swing by, get that armor suit pickup. That actually worked well for, uh, for Dehang. He was able to take away the heavy armor, do a little bit of rocket damage, and not get hit by that spit. So important for Dehang at this point here. That's going to mean that Cooler doesn't have it available for this next close range fight. A fight that Dehang will be taken directly to Cooler. Can he trust the LG? Can he trust the rail? Nope, that's going to be a hit forcing Dehang off the fight, allowing Cooler to recover. But here's the pressure on the rocket still. No matter how much health Dehang has or doesn't have, he's always there to do that hurt. Rail connecting over, however, over here on the cooler. If Dehang can trade out this kill, then he's going to be able to take it into OT. They trade each other, though. That's not going to be good for Dehang, as he's still down by one frag against Cooler. And there's only 45 seconds remaining into the round right now. The port up on top, he steals. Actually, no, he isn't able to go in and steal away. Cooler is going to be able to pick up the full armor suit. And now he's basically going to be on the run, just trying to stay alive for these last 30 seconds. But Hello runs right into him. He has the stealth nowhere near ready, but cool. Dehang didn't have any weapons to play with there. So Cooler will win it out and take control over third place here for the Quake World Championships. I cannot believe this to hang. <laughs> oh, man, he had him on the ropes. He, you know, Nyx didn't have Ghost Walk. To hang pulls out a rail of all things in that upper hallway, and Cooler just pushes it out, and uh, you can see he's, uh, he's a little bit pleased about it. You have to wonder towards the end of the fight there is like, oh, why is the hang not switching? Why is the hang not switching? And then you look back at his weapons, realize, oh, he hasn't picked anything else up yet because they just spawned. They just came back into the round after they trade each other out. It was a race for to hang to try and pick up that second kill, but ultimately he does drop down and Dehang will have to settle for the fourth place. It might have been a time where Dehang had to just, uh, you know, take some advice from a, a popular sacrifice team name. Team name. When in doubt, gauntlets out. 
Well, congratulations, of course, to Cooler. He is going to be taking home the lion's share of that third and fourth place prize pool. An extra $10,000 will go into his pocket. That will do it for myself and Jahar over here at the Caster Desk for now. We're going to send it over to the analyst to break down that game a little bit more. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, certainly a, uh, a, a nail biter, if you will. Went down to that last map. The first map was won by Cooler in 3 2, and then DeHang came back with a convincing win 3 1. Of course, Cooler. Uh, he, uh, he shuts it out with 3-2 win at the end. Uh, Vic, uh, amazing matchup. I know that you were kind of uh, rooting for to hang. Honestly, I felt like it was a win-win regardless uh, as we have two veterans who certainly have their own history in Quake. But uh, what did you think of the matchup? Yeah, I was pulling for my home team, obviously. But, you know, Cooler's a great guy, and I'm happy for him to get the win. Uh, I was very much in the balance. You saw several times where... Cooler would get away with critical health. DeHang would get away with critical health. Uh, there were a few moments there. I thought, you know, DeHang landed a good rocket uh, there on the last map on Blood Run, and he knocked the Sorlag right into him while yeah. he was spitting, and a little unfortunate. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he might look at that play where he did a rocket jump towards the heavy armor, and he got caught with that LG when, he, you know, the Sorlag was positioned on the bridge by the shotgun. Uh, little plays like that here and there when it matches that close. So you got to give it to Cooler for, for making the necessary plays to get the win. Carmack said it best while we were out back. He was saying, DeHang's name doesn't carry the weight that he does as an opponent. Like, he doesn't have the reputation Cooler does. Like, when you go up against Cooler, you're just going to naturally assume, oh, I think Cooler might win this. But DeHang really does deserve to have a greater reputation than he does. I mean, to that point, like, game two was an immaculate showing from DeHang. I, I thought, I mean, we saw a few of those rails on, on Ruin, like, just phenomenal. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, even earlier today, uh, as we were watching the team sacrifice, people were like, you know, I think DeHang might be the best team player that, that is at least in the U.S., right, uh, let alone uh, all our... So, yeah, I, I would agree with you, uh, Stuart. I, th I think that DeHang had a great showing. Uh, I mean, certainly a battle of champions, but cooler today, and it came out on top. As a bird, I'm selective about when I'm European, but I'd just like to say, and, and make myself unpopular, I'm so glad to see so many Americans up on the podium uh, in this tournament. Well, before we hear from our winner of that third place matchup, Cooler, uh, we want to give a special thank you and shout out to AMD, who has powered the Quake World Championships. All of our tournament machines and all the machines have been playing. Quake champions this weekend from all of our professional gamers have been supplied uh, by AMDs. Thank you for that. And we've got Paul, who's standing by with Cooler, our third place Quake World Championship. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, Cooler, congratulations on third place. You looked very happy at the end. So explain to me why winning this match was important for you. As I told you before, it's still a medal, you know? It doesn't really matter what kind of medal is it, but still it's a medal, you know? Yeah, so I have to go on the stage later and being like top three. And uh, yeah, I can tell, 31 years old, still world top three. And uh, yeah, bronze medal, and it's for Russia, for Navi, and for my family and all my fans. I, I, I love that, it's great. Uh, and I'm, I'm thrilled that you're happy to be back. I think the biggest question that we have for you as fans of Cooler is, is this a new beginning? Are you going to carry on playing Quake Champions? Are you going to work hard with Na'Vi? Are you going to practice? Are you going to come back and we're going to see you again and again playing Quake Champions? Okay, let's say it's a kind of market between players and game developers. And of course, it depends on like how good Quake Champions could be in the future. And it means a lot for us, pro players, to get able a chance to of course, like work, like earn some money, some titles, and stuff like that. And I really want to appreciate the guys who made this game for giving us a chance to get it, uh, to get everything uh, what we got already. Guys, keep going, don't stop. We trust in you. Quake is best. And by the way, you have nice shoes. I love this guy. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Cooler is your third place finisher here at the Quake World Championship, powered by AMD, of course. We are still 
have the grand finals to come for both Sacrifice and the 1v1. They're coming up very shortly. We're going to take a break. When we come back, though, it is time to crown a Sacrifice champion. We'll be right back.